Hello, this is Dr. Bao from Taiwan. Today is a beautiful holiday in Taiwan, and I'm going to share you, with you a very interesting case. We use the combination of uh, vertebral palsy, PPS fixation, and the UBE decompression to treat the patient with burst fracture in the thoracolumbar spine. This patient is a 66-year-old male with persistent low back pain and the progressive kyphosis after an accidental fall about two months ago that he became bedridden because every change of his position became so painful. Uh, she also, he also had both lower neck numbness and the progressive motor weakness. The muscle power is about 3 grade. The, he had no sphincter dysfunction. The DEXA scan of his lumbar spine showed the T-score uh, was between 2 minus 2 to minus 0.8. The image study of his uh, lumbar spine showed that he had T11 burst fracture with a severe canal stenosis and the right side foramen stenosis. Now, our surgical plan is to do the anterior support using the vertebral plasty. We will use uh, high viscosity and the low temperature cement, such as uh, mm, the comfort that the system provided by sensors. And then, then we use the uh, posterior fixation using the percutaneous pedicle screw system also from Synthesis, the Viper 2 system. And then finally we will use the post uh, we will do posterior decompression using the UBE technique. The extent of uh, decompression should be planned carefully before the surgery. The MRI is the most used for image modality when we do the uh, surgical planning. The area to be decompressed under axial view, the, we will do left side hemilaminectomy, laminectomy and the ULOBD to do the full decompression of the neural stenosis. And the decompression should be wide enough to expose the lateral border of the dura and if possible, we will do decompression of the neural foramen from inside out. On the axial view, on the sagittal view, the decompression should be more cranial than the lower margin of a T10 lamina and the more caudal than the upper lamina of a T12 lamina. There must be free space between the dura and the lamina after decompression and the dura position must be checked. Let's see the, the surgical video. Then I want to show you some um, detail. We usually start from uh, start our decompression from the lower margin of a T11 lamina. T11 lamina. And to move, uh, first we will move out. Uh, we will remove the outer cortex of T11 lamina, and then go to the inner lamina, also from uh, caudally to cranially, uh, until until the lower margin of T11 lamina. When you do the uh, re when you thinning the uh, inner cortex, it should be very careful. We like to use. Uh, the high speed battery to do the decompression. The system that we use is NSK Primado 2. That system provides the, the, the coarse diamond burr. The coarse diamond burr is very uh, safe, it's, it's more safer than the cutting burr and uh, more efficient than the fine diamond burr. The setting, the setting we use is uh, 20,000 RPM. Uh, that kind of uh, RPM is uh, good enough. When you, you do the decompression using high speed, but it should be very gentle. Never, never use the push down force. Uh, the movement of the bird should be horizontally back and forth or to avoid the injury to the underlying nerve tissue. In this way, if you are gentle enough, you are a very careful person, then the dura injury can be avoided. And you can see that the bone was uh, as thin as a very thin paper, transparent paper. And uh, the dura underneath is still uninjured, is still not injured. Then you go to the contralateral side to do the decompression. Uh, the, burr, the size of the burr is 3 millimeters. The, after removing the, the outer and the inner cortex of the lamina, we use a blunt elevator to remove the perineural membrane. This membrane should be very hyperemic because it is a chronic inflammatory status.
Then we use the punch to widening our laminectomy to expose the lateral border of the dura. At this stage, the space is already big enough, big enough that uh, you can, at this time, it is very safe to use the punch. You can see that I seldom use the punch. I, I prefer burr and uh, a blunt instrument to avoid injury to the neural tissue. Now we, we go to uh, remove the SAP of T12, try to release the neural foramen and uh, decompress the uh, T11 nerve root and the T12 nerve root from inside out of the foramen. At this stage, a curved osteotomy is very useful now. The angle of the osteotomy is parallel to the dura, so if you are a very careful person, the risk of a dura injury or a nerve injury is very low. But uh, I, I got to mention uh, that that technique is very difficult. So if you are not a very experienced surgeon, please don't try to use this technique because I have a, uh, already I already have a, a more than eight hundred cases of a UBE surgery. So uh, I'm very familiar with uh, handling of the instrument. So if you are not a very experienced surgeon, don't try to use uh, this technique because it, it is very dangerous. Now you can see that uh, the, the neural foramen was decompressed from inside out. And there is already a very big space between the lamina and the dura. That implies that the decompression is uh, maybe good enough, maybe big enough. Now we move to the T12 nerve root on the contralateral side. At this time, we also use the osteotum to remove the the bone that uh, cover the neural foramen and I try to try to decompress the T12 existing root. Now the decompression is almost done. Then you use the osteotome and uh, the big size punch to remove the remaining lamina and the ligamentum flavin to complete your decompression. The space is very big and safe enough for us to use a big instrument, such as a 4mm punch. Sometimes you will encounter bleeding from the epidural vein, then you can insert a small gel foam uh, into the dead space to help you stop the bleeding. That is very effective. Then you check the decompression, that is contralateral side. Now you see the, 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 the dura is fully decompressed. Very good, very good decompression. Uh, the result is very, is very good. The surgery was done through small surgical wound, which is measured about two centimeter each with a minimal soft tissue dissection and a minimal blood loss. The patient, stated, this patient stated there is almost no pain. The vas was a zero. According to the, the 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 nurse, the notes from our nurse. Uh, so they, you can under the endoscope, you can put, uh, you can uh, perform a very good decompression, and a stable fixation with anterior support in the posterior tension band. The muscle power recovered very well. The muscle power became full grade on the second postoperative day. In the postoperative image, you can see that. Uh, cement filling is very good and uh, it's a, only a small uh, cement leakage into the lower disc space and uh, fixation, the construct of fixation is very strong. Now this is the case that I want to share you today. I hope you enjoy and maybe the next time we will hope to see you next time and we will share our uh, interesting case with you. Thank you.